Okay, so this is just a, a follow-up in the um, the same series of the War Games videos that I've been making. We've got the MSI 8080 ESP, so MSI 8080 replica running just here. We're effectively using that as a terminal in this case to connect out to the War Games servers or TCP listeners, which are running on another machine, so on a Unix host, which is well, Linux host, just under my desk down here. I've already started up those services. What I'm doing is using the Mac Classic 2 here, just as a terminal for the MSI 8080. Reason being, I had a Mac Classic 2 anyway, <laughs> and I don't have enough room to have a terminal or a separate terminal. So I figured, hey, why not use the Mac Classic 2? It's absolutely fine. And using the terminal emulation software, in this case, Z term, the VT100 terminal emulation is actually pretty good. So we'll start up the MSI 8080. Look it up to run, and then if we just power up the Mac Classic 2, now obviously it's a, a CRT, so um, so you're going to get the scan lines on the video. The video that I'm looking at, or the um, the screen is is absolutely perfect here, but uh, nothing on much I can do about the scan lines on the video, I'm afraid. So we'll pick Z-Term from our drop down there. Now I've inverted the colors in Z-Term, so it's always gonna be white text on a black background. The default on the Mac in Z-Term is actually the other way around, so it's black text on a white background, but as personal preference, I find this a little easier to read. So here we go, sorry, the, the font is gonna be really small, I'm afraid. Um, what I might do is just zoom that in a bit so you can see a little better. So we're going to go to our iDrive on the MSI 8080 and we're going to run Kermit. We're going to set our port to UC1 and we're going to connect. Okay, we'll just make sure that's working. So if we issue an AT, yeah, we're getting an OK back. So we've got all the um, the individual listeners for the Wargame software running. So we've got one for the MSI 8080 simulated, but we're going to skip connecting to that because we're already running an MSI 8080. It just means that we're not able to use the dialer functions, but everything else will work absolutely fine. So we can still connect to School Computer, Uni Marine Bank, Pan Am, and the Whopper itself. Beast. There you go. Okay, so this is connected to the school computer. Okay, so there you go. We've got the grades for David Lightman. And we can obviously go in and get the grades for Jennifer Mack as well, or we can add additional records, or we can do whatever, change the grades. Okay, so the difference is when we come out, it'll disconnect. It won't take us back to the um, simulated MSI because we're connecting to those uh, services or servers, if you like, directly. So this time we'll connect again onto the host called Beast. Uh, 9992 and this is Union Marine Bank okay now if you've been watching the other videos you'll know that at the moment this doesn't actually do anything much at some point I might go around to writing a bit more code and uh, make it appear to be a bit more functional so you can do some transfers between accounts that kind of stuff but um, at the moment it doesn't do a great deal so this time we'll go atd for dial beast on port 9993 okay so this is pan am and if we just do a search yeah, there should be reservations already there for david lightman and for mac there you go we can see there's a reservation there for david lightman so we'll come back out of there and we'll just return to come back out again that will just disconnect us this time atd onto beast 
9994. This should be a whopper. Okay, and it's at this point that we'll start to get some of the, um, the sound effects. You'll hear the samples. Now, the samples are actually coming out of the host computer at the moment, so the Linux box, which is sat under my desk. Uh, the sound's coming out of a, another monitor, which is just off to the left-hand side there. Well, obviously, you could run the whole thing on Raspberry Pi and just tuck it behind the MSI or behind the, the Mac terminal or whatever terminal you were using. So here we've got the option. We can type in help, help log on, help games, list games. Now, it's probably worth mentioning that the... Um, Serial port on the IMSI is set up for 115200 and you can possibly just about make that out on the monitor. Now you can set it up for whatever speed you want, but the faster the better because when we get into playing things like the tic-tac-toe game, it's going to need that extra bandwidth. So if, you, if you're running it at say 9.6, you're going to get a bit of a delay whilst it catches up on printing all the characters to the screen. It's not a big deal either way, really. So the connection between the Mac Classic 2, in this case, and the MSI 8080 ESP, it's literally just a null modem cable. Um, so old school serial. Okay, so we've got uh, that point. We've already done our list games and we'll log in using our Joshua account. Okay, there we go. And again, if you've been watching the previous videos, you'll know we've got some hints built in. So we've got, um, if we type in help, it'll tell us what we can do. Uh, at this point, let's have to tell you what, we'll have a look at DEFCON. It's currently DEFCON 5. We haven't upset anyone yet. Um, what we can do is we'll have our rudimentary chat with Joshua or with Whopper. So if we type hello, Okay, how are you feeling? Fine. Excellent. Okay, so if you've watched the previous videos, you'll know that all you've actually got to do is hit the keywords here. You can type whatever you want as long as you hit the keywords. So the first one was hello, then it was fine, now it's mistakes. Uh, so you can literally, you could say, you know, people make mistakes or whatever you want, as long as it contains that keyword. Yes, they do. Shall we play a game? Okay, and the next keyword is nuclear. Now it's worth mentioning, actually, you can mix it up a bit. So you can use any of the commands in between the keywords. So if we changed our mind and, and, and decided actually, you know, we want to know what the date is today, for argument's sake, that's fine, it'll give us the date, but then we can still carry on the conversation with Whopper. And it's sequenced as well, so you have to type the responses in the right order. If you don't, it's not a problem, but it just won't do anything. It'll wait until you get the response correctly. But um, but any of the commands will work at any point throughout the, uh, the Whopper chat or the Joshua chat. Wouldn't you prefer a good game or chess? See, we're going to go for option two, Soviet Union, but you don't have to, you could pick either side. Sorry about the dog barking, by the way. <laughs> Okay, so you can input up to four primary targets here. L for launch. Just move that around a fraction so you can see a bit more of the insight.
Okay, and at this point, this is where in the uh, in the film, obviously, if you've seen the last video, you'll know all of this. So I'll get I'll rattle through it quite quickly because it's really just to show you it working with a terminal, be it a Mac Classic <laughs> or whatever. Um, so at this point, they've disconnected um, the the number in Sunnyvale, but Wop has called you back anyway. So. In the film, he says, no, incorrect identification, I'm not Falcon. As long as you hit the keyword of incorrect, it'll, Sorry it'll to work. hear that, Professor. Yesterday's aim was interrupted, although primary goal has not yet been achieved. Solution is near. Okay, so we can type what, as in what is the primary goal, but as long as you hit the keyword, it'll work. You should know, Professor. And again, what is the primary goal? It'll keep track on the number of times you've asked. To win the game. Okay, and then at this point, actually in reality, he's been transported to Norad. Clearly we can't simulate that. So he's still doing this at home. He then asks, uh, are you still playing the game? You've got to hit the keyword of still. Of course. I should reach DEFCON 1 and launch my missiles in 28 hours. Would you like to see some projected kill ratios? And here he asks the question, is it a game or is it real? You've only got to hit the keyword of real. What's the difference? Okay, and he asks what classified address, but you've only got to hit the uh, keyword of address. DOD pension files indicate current mailing as Dr. Robert Hume, aka Stephen W. Bolton, 54 Cedar Road, Goose Island, Oregon. Okay, so at this point, at, uh, at the war room in NORAD, they've ridden out the uh, the attack, and basically where, where it's saying terminal echo war room, it's uh, it's simulating the view that they would have seen in the war room. Um, but uh, David Lyman gets to see it as well. Lucky him. So now it's going through, and, uh, and Joshua or Whopper is basically trying to uh, to work out or guess the, um, the launch codes so that he can launch the missiles himself. But whilst we're waiting for that, because that'll take a minute or so, the point of making this video is just to show you how this was really intended to work. So 
the idea is that the the host that's basically running all the war game software is adjacent to the terminal and the MSI or the Altair or whatever other machine you choose to run it on. If you ch choose to run it this way at all, of course you can run the whole thing just locally and it works for absolutely fine, you know? And with cool retro term, it gives you pretty much the same experience. But, um, you know, there's nothing like running it on actual, I was gonna say actual hardware, but it's not really, because of course this is an emulated MSI 8080, but it's pretty close. Okay, so we're now gonna go in and play tic-tac-toe. Obviously you can play one player, two player, but the whole point of the exercise is to defeat the computer. Now, in this case, uh, and I'm gonna show it this time, I've still got the parameters set up so that they're suitable for running this on a faster machine. So in this case, it's a, a 24 core Mac Pro. It's a monster, hence it's called Beast. But of course, this was really geared up to run it on Raspberry Pi 4 or something. So I won't be able to run this, to drive this hard enough to actually max out the CPU the way this is set up. But that's fine, because we'll look at the, um, the other option. So if we put in number of users zero, and then we play, let's say, 10 games, uh, let's do five games, whatever. It will probably not <laughs> hit the um, the CPU utilization threshold, in which case when we come back out of the game, we'll get a different result. Play again. There's no point. On this machine, we would have to lower the CPU utilization threshold to about 20%, 25%, set the trigger count to two, and then we could actually get it to trigger. But under the circumstances, it's never going to happen because it's currently set to 60% because it's um, the source code still geared up for a Raspberry Pi. Anyway, not to bore you with, with the details too much, it won't hit it the way it's set up. So if I say, no, we're done, when it comes out, you'll get a different result. Okay, there you go. You failed to prevent Whopper from launching the missiles. World War Three has commenced. And if we look at the DEFCON status now, it's a DEFCON 1. And also, if we look at, if we try and run global thermo nuclear war again, it'll tell us that the game routine is still running because we haven't defeated it, so it's still playing the game. And and that's fundamentally different to the last video that I made, which shows you what happens when you do actually successfully defeat Whopper and get him to stand down the missiles. So it's probably worth going there anyway, just in case. I'm not gonna show you too much more on this video because the last video was pretty comprehensive and we went into how to look at the users. From that, you can pretty much glean how to create users how to use the uh, email facility, and a few other bits and pieces as well. So that's probably about it to wrap this one up. It was just supposed to be a quick intro, <laughs> relatively quick anyway, to show you how it'll work with a terminal. Albeit it's not just a dumb terminal, it's a Mac Classic too, but the way we're using it, we're literally just using it as a dumb terminal. All right guys, um, I'll leave for now, and I will catch you on the next one. Cheers.